Hello, my name is Cameron Poe, and today I'll be teaching you about the topic of steganography and how it is detected. Now here's a look at the subtopics we will be covering. First, we will be asking what steganography is and its presence in world history. Next, we will be discussing digital stegon steganography and the methodology behind it with an example of a specific type of concealment. Then we will discuss how steganography is found and what software experts typically use to discover it. Finally, we will be talking about steganography's positive and negative influences on the world, referencing specific examples, and discussing its relevance to the topic of digital forensics. To start off the lesson, we must ask ourselves a simple question. What is steganography? In simple terms, steganography is the process or art of concealing information without leaving behind any trace of the information's presence. Now, there are five primary types of steganography. The first is physical steganography, which involves the physical covering or changing of something in order to cover a hidden message. For example, if someone were to write a message on an envelope and cover that message with the stamp or address label, then that would be considered steganography. The second type is called digital for is called digital steganography, which involves the concealing of messages or files within other files on a computer. This type tends to be more complicated and more difficult to detect. However, we will discuss that further later on. The next type, social steganography, involves the use of pop culture references and other such well-known phrases to disguise a hidden meaning. Then there is network steganography, which involves the use of steganographic content to hide and communicate with people over telecommunication networks. The final type of steganography is printed steganography which involves the changing of font size, spacing, typeface, or other characteristics of text to carry a hidden message. This type can be shown in children's puzzles where objects are hidden within an image for the child to find. Now, how has steganography shown up in history? One could say that the entire espionage network of the world is founded upon steganography. However, I have a few examples to show you that ju that just to show you how just how old the art truly is. In ancient Egyptian times, people would communicate using stone tablets or by word of mouth. It has been found through archaeological investigations that some people would carve hidden messages into stone tablets only to cover the tablet with wax and write a cover message on top of it. In later times, the ancient Greek Herodotus details another interesting method of hiding messages in his histories. He describes a character, Histaeus, who sends a secret message by shaving his servant's head, writing his message, and then waiting for the hair to grow back before sending his servant to the de desired recipient. The only instruction he gave to the servant was to have the recipient shave the servant's head once in private. In more modern times, soldiers have used sign languages or Morse code to communicate with the United States. In the Korean War, prisoners, prisoners of war would discreetly flip off the camera in pictures in order to show that they hadn't defected. While in Vietnam, prisoners in staged videos would blink messages in Morse code. One such message spelled out T-O-R-T-U-R-E, confirming to the U.S. that the Viet Vietnamese were torturing POWs. Now here you see two pictures. On the left is, is an example of a children's puzzle where objects are hidden throughout a larger picture in order for children to find. On the right is an example of the pictures of defectors in the Korean War. If you look closely at the hands of the man sitting the second in from the right, you can see that he is actually flipping off the camera, signifying that they had not actually defected to the Korean side. Now we will delve into digital steganography, where messages or files are hidden within other files. 
I'd like to remind you that the hidden files can be rather difficult to detect depending on the method used by the steganographer and the type of file that is hidden. For the purposes of explanation, there are two key phrases you should be aware of. The first is the term payload, which is used to describe the hidden file or message. The second is carrier file, which is used to describe the file in which the payload is hidden. Now, he now here we will look at a list of some methods digital steganographers use to hide messages or files. The first is LSB, or Least Significant Bit Concealment, which I will demonstrate for you in the next slide. The next is tampering with executable files, followed by concealing encrypted or random data. A popular method is to embed video files in video material or with an audio material via echo modification. A simple online method is to use blog steganography or to separate a message and scatter its contents across multiple different websites for someone to reassemble. Another method is to place data in ignored sections of a file or to simply make text the same background, same color as the background. I'd like to remind you, though, that this list is only a small portion of the much longer, possibly infinite, list of methods steganographers can use to hide messages. Here is an example of embedding a textual message within an image, which is done via least significant bit substitution. For the purposes of this example, we will be embedding the letter X, which has a binary value of 01011000, into 8 bytes of data taken from an image file. This is done by taking the 8 digits in the value for X and substituting each in for the least significant bit, therefore spreading the letter across multiple bytes of data and making it more difficult to reconstruct the message. Here's how it's done. The original data looks like this row and would change to this row when the letter X is substituted in. As you can see, the bold and italicized bits, also known as the least significant bits, have been either left or changed in order to spell out the binary for the letter X, which is 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. This example process is rather simple and can be easily detected. However, if one were to space out the bits being changed by a certain number of bytes, then it becomes more complicated. This is only a small example of the many possible ways to hide messages within various mediums. However, it shows you the ease with which one can do it, as all we did here was change one, two, three least significant bits. The rest we all just left the same. This example is actually taken directly from the website portion of this project. Now, we've talked about steganography, but we have yet to talk about how we detect it. So how do you go about detecting steganography? Well, it typically has to happen in a three-step fashion. First, we must determine which files on a hard drive are most likely to be a carrier file, which we can use programs for determining or simply use statistics by, using, by determining the likelihood for each file. This is typically the longest step as it's difficult to find a carrier file and it's even more difficult to statistically find one. Second, once we find a carrier file, we must try to determine two things. One, how the payload is hidden, and two, what the payload could be, as both are essential to the extraction process. Finally, if possible, we must break the file open and attempt to extract the payload. As noted below, below each step in the previous slide, there are some tools we can use to make each step much easier. Whetstone Technologies has come out with a series of three pieces of software that help with each step, as well as an online course to train users in the technology. 
the first program called StegoHunt is used to find carrier files. The second, known as StegoAnalyst, is used to analyze the potential payload and determine what it could be. And the last program, which is called StegoBreak, is used to extract the payload from the carrier file. Now that we know what steganography is and how to find it, let's look at a case where steganography can be used to benefit people. In the medical field, steganography can be used so that patients can monitor and transmit their medical data from home. This way, the transmitted data, if hacked, can't be linked to the patient, as the identity and personal information of the patient is steganographically hidden in the medical data. In development, researchers placed information within an electrocardiogram file, as an ECG produces vast amounts of data per second. So there was plenty of room to hide information within the ECG data. However, they believe that this technique could be applied to most types of medical data. Steganography also has some not so good uses, such as hiding documents or illegal pictures. Terrorist groups, more specifically the Al-Qaeda, have been noted to use steganographic files. One case discusses how an Al-Qaeda member was caught with a flash drive. On the drive, a pornographic video called Kick-Ass was found, but what was really interesting was what was hidden inside the video file. Numerous files, including plans, tactics, and announcements, were steganographically hidden in the video file. One could then ask, after learning some, positive, some positives and negatives about steganography, how has it affected our world? Well, its influence has been both good and bad, as it is simply a tool, not an inherently good or evil technology. The influence it has is entirely based on the person or people using it. It has helped many few people escape torture, while it has also helped many others inflict massive attacks. But it can also help in simple everyday life, as discussed before in the medical field. So how does the topic of steganography play into our class? Well, a key part of digital forensics is being able to search for and find hidden files. For the cyber criminals that experts look to put behind bars are typically versed in co covering their own tracks. Steganography is a perfect way for them to cover their tracks, which is why forensic experts need to be equally as versed in analyzing files for steganography. Well, I hope you, hope you enjoyed learning about steganography and how it's detected. Thank you for watching.